Hello, everyone, and welcome to our December edition of the On the Air with the ODA. And today we're going to talk about the Oracle Database Appliance Software Release 1913. Oh, and, and with me, of course, is uh, Carlos Ortiz. Um, hi, Carlos. Hey, Paul. <laughs> okay, Hello, King. So let's get started. Yeah. So uh, our agenda today is to kind of go through the 1913 release. And uh, the main feature of this release is what we call multi-user access feature. And we'll have a little demo on that. And then we'll also go over some of the enhancements um, that's included in this release. And then finally, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, OVM support. Um, so 1913 will be the final and last release with the OVM support. So we'll talk about that and, and the ramifications uh, of that. And then, then we'll have a little bit of a, a demo on the new feature, the multi-user access for about you know, 10 minutes. And then we'll open the uh, webcast to a Q&A. So as usual, you know, when we release a ODA uh, a new release, we support the latest uh, uh, database release updates. So in this release, we'll support the October 2021 release updates and uh, for all the supported model, right? Starting with the ODA X8 down to ODA X5. And uh, again, we'll, we'll talk about the, the OVM support uh, at the end of the slides. And, uh, and, we, uh, and you can see the list of the supported uh, uh, database clones, you know, from 21.4 in the DB system only. And then of course the 19.13 and the 12.2 and 12.1. And we also put together these charts to just show that, you know, because we're going through some database support tra transition and to show that just what ODA software support what database, right? So as you can see, we uh, uh, do not ship a da uh, Oracle Database 11G clone starting with 1911. And we, we stopped shipping the database 18C clone with 1912. So in other words, you cannot provision, you know, 18C database now starting with 1912. And uh, 1913 shows all the supported version of the Oracle databases. And then the bottom two are showing the, uh, uh, how you patch to the latest uh, ODA versions um, to like 1913. We typically recommend you stay within the four previous releases then you can patch directly. Now, that doesn't mean you can't patch from earlier versions, just that it has not been tested, but they should work. But just to be safe, try to have your customers uh, stay within the, the most recent four releases. And then we'll talk a little more on the OVM patching support. So you can go from um, the OVM 198 to 1913 now. And, uh, and like I say, we have a, a slide on that, on the OVM uh, uh, support. Please. Okay, so, so Carlos, uh, I'll hand it over to you to talk about the new feature in 1913, the multi-user access. Um, yes. So. Multi-user access, um, new feature that comes with 1913. On the right-hand side, you can see a screenshot, right of the screen. You can see there in the red box um, what it is in the menu, right? This, um, it, it, uh, I mean, with multi-user access, it, it's going to give you to customers, you're going to give customers a mechanism to, for role separation. Right, this will enhance the security of the appliance because if you have critical databases, you can only assign it to to uh, a certain Oracle database administrator, for example, and no one else will have access to it. no other Oracle database administrator will have access to that one. Right? It it uh, well currently prior to nineteen thirteen. Uh, you only had a single user. It was a root user for the CLI, uh, ORA CLI, and it was an ORA-admin user for the buoy, right? Today, um, we're going to show you in the next slide and in the demo, right, that there's going to be a single user that operates in the CLI, ORA CLI and the buoy, right? Uh, but you have the abil ability now to create separate users to just give them access to uh, for Oracle Database Administration. Um, now, in the last bullet point, right, you can see something that we highlighted in red. It, it, um, you can only enable multi-user access when you provision the appliance. So that means that if you patch from an older version to 1913, 
that feature is not going to be enabled. And the reason why we're doing that, it's it's um, this is a major change in the way that the Oracle database appliance operates, right? It's um, it it uh, you we want you right to try it to test it, make sure that this is something that uh, you want to do, uh, because once you enable it, there is no way right to go back it's it's permanently permanently enabled uh, you will need to re-image the system again right so existing customers are running on 1912 for earlier releases to to use this feature uh, they will need to re-image the unit to 1913. yeah so i just want to make a comment that uh, so far you know in the last 10 years uh, we only have the root user for the command line and the uh, o dash admin for the for the uh, browser use, user interface uh, in the last few years. So it is changing the behavior and how users access ODA. So it is a big, big change. So we wanna make sure, you know, the customers think through carefully before they enable this product. And uh, uh, because it is a different way of, uh, you know, managing the ODA. Uh, but, you know, for some customers, this is a very valuable tool, right? So so not, you know, not, you know only the, the root user can, uh, manage the ODA now. You can have different users, um, you know, and have they have uh, uh, their own privileges to access their own database and so forth. So, so a lot, a lot of security benefits with this feature, but it is a change in behavior. So that's why I want to make sure people think through before they enable this feature. Yeah, that's it. Okay, and on this slide, what we're showing you in the screenshot is that um, after when you are provisioning the system. Right. Once you configure the first net and you go to the uh, browser user interface, this is the first screen that you're going to get. And this is where you set the password, right? They enter the password, confirm the password. And you can see right underneath uh, that it says enable multi-user access, uh, not applicable for database systems, for DB systems, right? It, it, um, this is the only time in which you're going to get the opportunity to check it and say, yes, I want to use uh, multi-user access. It, um, now, in the red box here, right, you can see that it says the same credentials are used for the GUI and, and for system login to run CLI commands. And we're going to show you in the demo, right, the user admin. But on the right-hand side, uh, to date, Right, it's uh, up to 1912. Uh, you can use ORA dash admin. Notice the dash, right? When we go to 1913 with the multi user access, is ORA admin with no dash for the buoy and the CLI. And the root uh, is going to be the root access is going to the access is going to be restricted to ORA system administration to get access to the system log, debug issues that require root access. Okay, and and uh, so very important. This is a check mark where you need to select it if you want to use multi-user access. Okay, and so here's for reference. It's just a list of the new Ora CLI commands. Um, we just well, you you can look at it at your leisure uh, or go to the documentation uh, for more details. Okay, now. Other enhancements that are coming with 1913, the first one is support for registering TDE enabled database. Some of you may remember that this actually came with 1912, but there were some limitations on, on the life cycle of the, the wallet management. And now today, right, when you, uh, when you import a, a database that is TD enabled, right? The uh, the TDE wallet is the lifecycle management is going to be similar as if you created a database in the Oracle Database Appliance and enabled it for TDE. So that's that's uh, the main change. Uh, the second one, right? It's since we started supporting Linux 19.7, we didn't have support for CIS compliance. Uh, Center for Internet Security Benchmarks. And with 1913, it is now supported, right? It's uh, on the second bullet point, 
uh, we provide the location where the script is at, right? And obviously refer to the documentation uh, to for details on how to run it. Um, in the future, we'll also do a video on this to just show you uh, how to run it. And the last enhancement here is a parameter repository for Oracle Database Appliance. So when the Oracle Database Appliance is running multiple databases, it look at and it's going to initialize them, right? It looks at the SP file to um, for the parameters that are uh, that need to be used, right? Now what we're doing here, uh, we are providing um, sort of an extension, a parameter repository that if you want to specify some other parameters uh, for the databases and that they can be applied to all the databases in the Oracle Database Appliance, right? then you can do it. One example is uh, when we go from, from uh, when we patch to 1912, if you, look at the, if you look at the patching steps, right? you've got to log in on every single database to enable it for NUMA right for NUMA NUMA and uh, with this parameter repository right through REST API you could set that up and it will enable it for for all the databases and uh, Paul any additional comments on on this one that you want to make or yeah I just want to make a general comments as you can see we're starting to emphasize more on security you know the first two enhancements are all security related and on the, the third enhancement, it's really about, you know, uh, leveraging our REST API to be able to do things much more efficiently. So again, that's uh, something uh, the, the SDK and the REST API was published uh, about a year ago. So, so we're trying to leverage that. And uh, so those are the comments I wanna make on these uh, new enhancements in 1913. Okay. Now, so as Paul mentioned at the beginning, right, 1913 is the final uh, release that will support the Oracle Database Appliance with virtualized platform using OVM. And, and uh, for the supported models, as you see here, right, the X5, 6, 7, and 8. And um, now we wrote a blog, right? There is an, all the way at the bottom, you see the blog entry, the link, uh, we're gonna, uh, we can provide you this information or just Google Oracle Database Appliance blocks and you're going to be able to see it in the front page, right, for, for details. But one of the important things is to understand that OVM, it was already announced end of life and the extended support is going to end in June 2024 for OVM. Um, this is the last release that we will provide for those configurations. That means that after this release, right, if customers want to implement uh, patches, then they can do it manually. But to get the patch for OVM, um, it is required the purchase of an extended support for operating system. And I and, um, wanted to make sure that that's very clear. But if you go to the blog, it will give you more details in there. Um, and obviously, depending on every customer situation, right? But if they are able to migrate to KVM as soon as possible, um, that would be best. We wanted to add a link here to the, um, to, to a mass node, right? That will help you on, or provide you information on how to migrate. And, but we'll put it in the blog. Uh, it's, it's not listed here. Yeah, so I just want to mention, yeah, in the blog, we do have the MOS node to talk about how you can migrate the existing applications in OVM to KVM. So, so there's a MOS node that, that tell you how to do that. And we're working on some tools to help with uh, migrating the database in OVM to KVM as well. And, and that's coming uh, uh, in the near future. Yeah, and one last comment, right? It, it uh, as far as support, so customers can, continue right to call technical support receive support uh obviously as soon as you have a support contract so that will that will continue the only thing that will be different is that if any patches are required it's going to need to be done manually for the database for the operating system for ovm so that's um that's the last point that i wanted to make on this 
So now uh, we want to switch to uh, to a quick demo, a quick video, right? That we recorded for to show you the multi-user access. So we'll go through that, and then after that, we can go through the questions. Um, so here I'm already logging into the system, and you can see the username, Ora Admin. Notice no dash, right? And and uh, so once you log in, and so you see on the upper right hand side, right there, right, the multi user access tab, right? We're running 1913. And on the left hand side, here you can see the sub menu, right? Users, roles, entitlements, and resources. And on this first page here, these are the users that are created by default. Uh, you can see here the Aura admin um, administrators and, and grid Oracle, right? all uh, system users. And as far as roles, um, you, you can see all of, well, all the ones here, or administrators, or dash DB. And if you look at that or dash DB, um, it has the flag internal fault, right? This is, this or DB is the, the only role today that can be applied to new users and is gonna allow to, to manage uh, databases, right? It, um, you get other users that at the moment, at the moment are not used, but in, in the future, right? There's, um, there's gonna be additional details on yeah. that. Uh, you can see the entitlements, right? So a row is a collection of, of entitlements. So below you can see kind of what kind of privileges they have. And, uh, and as Carlos said, that this is the first release of the multi-user access, right? Over time, we will enable some of the roles below so that uh, we can assign to users. But this is, the, so the first release, um, the users that we created uh, can basically can have the DBA role for the, for the older system. So, so that's, that's what the entitlements are, yeah. Okay. And then the next option here is the entitlements. And this is just a listing of all the different entitlements that exist for the moment. It is just a listing that you cannot do anything. It's already predetermined by the roles that we support, right? And the last option on the left is the resources. And here you're gonna see database homes, the actual databases, uh, there's a database storage. And, and um, now one thing that I'm gonna show you here, it's uh, if you click on this show advanced search, like um, you see the home one and home two, those are items that we already deleted. If you look at the active faults, right? It's, it's, uh, they, they are deleted, but are kept for historical purposes for auditing. Um, and by clicking in the show advanced search and just, and just click on show all active resources, refresh, then it hides anything that is inactive. Okay, and, and this is something uh, you're gonna see through the video that we're gonna do this about three times here, but this is something that for the next release, right? It will just show by default um, only the active ones. Yeah, so this okay. is basically to show that uh, uh, what resources the user have access to, right? So, so we created the DB3 and DB4 so that then we can assign the, uh, the user to the database. So, so these are what, what you assign to the users, the resources, yeah. Oh yeah, and a best practice tip here. If you notice DB3 underneath, is this DB3U. Uh, this is the, DB3 is the Oracle database and, and the DB3U is assigned to the, to the database storage. Okay, so when you create a database, uh, there is a field that tells you what is the name of the database right underneath uh, in the browser user interface. It tells you what is the unique name that, that you want to give it to the uh, to the database, right? So here we just use the DB3 is the name, DB3U is the unique name, right? We just use the U for unique name. Um, so best practices, give it a different name or, or give it a unique name. That way it can be assigned to the or a DB storage, um, so it and and differentiate on that, right? So and here is the DB four, 
So next, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and create a user, All right? So here is the user three. We're gonna give you the role. The only one at this point is the Aura TV. Um, enter the password. It's gonna be a secure password, right? You create it. It's a very fast process, right? To just create the user, success. And then we're gonna go ahead and just create the user four. So same process, right? And you can see here um, at the bottom on the users, now we have that user three and user four. And now um, you can see on the drop down menu, right? There's two options today. One is to authorize a password reset. If the user forgets the password, uh, it gets, the, you click here, right? To then is, is going to go to the Aura admin to just uh, authorize the, or provide a uh, reset the password basically or delete the user, right? That's what you can do. Now, um, I'm gonna go li log into the user four. Obviously, you're gonna need to set the, uh, the new password or the permanent password. Uh, once you do that, right, then, oops, log in again. Uh, right, user four, log in and and there we are, right? It's, uh, now, on this screen, if I want you to look at the three tabs at the top, there's three three tabs in this browser, right? The, the one on the left is the Aura admin, the one in the middle is the user three, the one on the right user four, and you can see it right here on the current user, right? This is user four, because we're gonna be switching between screens yeah, to show you. And you can see also the tabs things. are a little different, right? The users don't have all the tabs that the administrator has, right? So it's shorter. Yeah, so here you can see five options, right? Appliance, database, object store, security, and activity. And and uh, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna click on the leftmost tab right here, right in this in the browser tab, just to compare, right? What the Aura admin has access to. All there are seven tabs here, right? With a um, multi-access diagnostics, etc. So we already filtered, right, for certain activities that the uh, user is not going to have access to. Now, if we click on database, there are no databases. Even though we have database three and database four, right, the user doesn't have access to them. But this user, I mean, can just go ahead and create the databases and it's going to be only visible to them and the Aura admin, obviously. And, and uh, now this is the, now we're looking at the user three, you can see here, right? Um, I'm going to click on database and the same thing, right? You don't have access to databases. So now I'm clicking on this leftmost browser tab and now we are in the Aura admin, right? It's a, you can see it over here, Aura admin. Um, so we go to the multi-user, we go to the resources, um, quickly filtering for active. And now this is the DB3, right? On the DB3, and like we're just gonna grant access to user three. And uh, DB4, uh, the same for user four, right? And now if we just go to the activity, you can see that it's already done, so fairly quick. And now um, I'm clicking on user three now on the tab, right? If we refresh, now you're gonna be able to see that this user has access to database three, DB3 right there, right? That's the properties. And if you, now I'm clicking on user four, right? And the DB4, it's already there as well, um, access to, to that. And, Okay, so now back on the Aura admin screen, right? The Aura administrator. If we look at the uh, the um, well, uh, the resources. I want to show you the resources here, right? The active ones, and if you look at DB three, you can even see here, right? Who, which users have access to that resource? In this case, is the user three, 
and over here in the before is the user four. Um, and I mean, and that was it. This was just a, a quick uh, demo on the multi-user access. Right. Um, yeah, Paul, any? Yeah, no, I was just going to comment. So as you can see, there's a lot of future possibilities, right? With all the different resources and uh, entitlements and we can create different roles. So, um, so in the future, we can say, you know, you can set up a backup role so that that user can only do backups or we can set up a data guard roles, right? So, so it's a very powerful feature or the framework to support multi-user and then increase security, you know, when you have multiple people accessing the ODA. So, so we see it, this is the beginning, you know, to supporting more multi-user on ODA uh, so that not everyone has to be a root user to, to access it. And then also, uh, if you enable this feature, you don't want to be, you know, running the command as root because every time you do a ODA CLI command, it's going to require you to enter the ODA admin password. So you always want to SSH into the system as ODA admin now instead of the root user. So that's that's just a, something to be aware of. So. Uh... Team, I guess now we can go to any questions that you may have. Feel free to, well, we have a chat uh, right now, or you can unmute and ask questions. Yes, okay. So no questions so far. Go ahead. Um, let us know what questions. So, so again, just to, to remind you, for customers to enable this feature, they must, you know, do a fresh provisioning. So, in other words, reimage. Uh, so, if you patch from the existing release, like 1912 to 1913, this feature will not be visible to the customer. Okay. Do we have any other important feature other than multi-user in 1913? Well, you may want to talk about that log cleaning, right? That was not captured, but I think that would be useful for, for space management. Oh, yeah, we may want to mention this, you know, starting with 1912, I don't know how many of you are aware of this, the, uh, the file system has been shrank by half, right? So for customer that are patching, it's very important to manage their space. Uh, when they copy these clone files over to their boot disk, they, they can only copy the GI and the database clone to the boot disk. Otherwise, they, they may run out of the room. But once they deploy the ODA, then uh, because we're starting to use the ACFS on the data disk, then they can copy everything else to the, to, to the, to the data disk group. So, so the initial step, you have to be a little more careful in terms of space management now. So, so again, that's just a, just a tip because uh, 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 the change in the file system size on the, starting with 1912. Yeah. Yes. And Right, thank you, Paul. And to Anil, right, it's uh, as as important features. This was the marquee feature in 1913. Um, there were uh, there are some other minor ones, enhancements, um, but but uh, so that was basically it for 1913. Uh, 1914 will give you some sort of verbal preview, right? It's a um, but that one, we don't want to have any features, right? Our goal is not uh, to come up with any features, but basically all we're going to do is just uh, do just uh, quality enhancements, basically, right? It's uh, um, take a look at some existing bugs, make sure that we fix them, improve the overall stability, right, for 1914. Um, well, Kurt is asking when are we when will rolling node updates be back in the Oracle Database Appliance? Um, so, so we have to get back to you on that because uh, again, the um, um, uh, there are some other project that may help negate the need to do that. But um, uh, but yeah, so, so we can talk to you offline, Kurt. So yeah, I also want to just. Uh, emphasize um, Carlos, uh, what Carlos just said that, right? We're moving to this sort of TikTok model too, right? So, so we're going to try to just make sure the, 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 the release is, um, and the ODA is running as smooth as possible. So every six, 
six, every other release, we're going to be releasing big new features. But but in, in the interim, in the in the the middle release, we're going to just try to fix all the bugs, making sure everything works, patching works, you know, uh, as flawlessly as possible. And then so that uh, you know, so we have time to stabilize and add new features, stabilize add new features. So I think it's it, it will be good overall, just just uh, for our customers as well. Yes. Any other question? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, oh, I mean, yeah. the other thing is, I don't know if everyone on uh, 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 on this knows, is that we have published a replay um, of all the older webcasts. Um, yeah on the YouTube now, right? So it's, yeah, so it's publicly available so that, you know, you don't have to sign in as a partner to, to view it now because we're, we want our customers to see these webcasts as well. Yes, yeah, so let me show you here. You go to YouTube and there is a Oracle Database Product Management um, a channel right here, Oracle Database Product Management channel. If you scroll all the way to the bottom here, you're going to see Exadata and you're going to see the Oracle Database Appliance. And here, right, the talks that we are providing in this medium here with the Oracle on the air with Ora, uh, we also put them in here. That way, uh, customers can have access to this. Okay. And now, um, this home page here is a rotating page. Uh, because there are multiple products. But if you go to a playlist, if you don't find it at the front, you just click on playlists here. And if it's not at the front, it's going to show over here as well. Yeah. Okay. So we do have a few more yeah. questions on the chat. Let's take a look. First, oh. customers using database, if we patch OD19, it's possible to patch the to Oh, we must have. Um, I, th I believe you can do both what you need to do is download the uh, pat the older patch you know like from 1813 to 1814 so so that would still work now uh obviously there, might, yeah wait a second is that an 1814 I mean, uh, we, well i'm just just uh, saying let's we could look at that uh, slide right that tells you the different yeah. what i'm saying is that you can download the older patch and uh okay well we we met we I guess we did, we skipped the 1814. So you could patch to, let's say if you're on 183, uh, you can patch to 185, right? Or 187. So you can stay on the 18 train track, but you know, 18 is out of support. So the customer should really try to um, move to um, 19, right? But but the 198 is a um, mandatory stop because we do a, a Linux upgrade from 196 uh, and um, to 197, so you have to go to. Oh, I, th I think they're referring to the database itself, not the. Uh, yeah. Itself. Yeah. Yeah. The database, yeah. So, so you can stay on 18, or you know, or you can up to uh, um, upgrade to 19. Yes. Yeah, the last the last clones that we provided for the 18 were in 1911, as right. you can see in this matrix here. Okay, so the next question is the. Um, performance uh, with OVM. And uh, we are doing testing for the KVM and DB systems. So um, so I just don't have the time timeline for publishing of that paper, but, but uh, our performance groups doing the testing. So, so, that, so we will have that. It's just, uh, we don't have the data on that yet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so we understand rolling upgrades very important. And I think the, we made that point to, to our development organization. So they, they understand that. Uh, we'll either bring that feature back or we'll have an alternative for you uh, for the rolling upgrades. Uh, now the current workaround, of course, is using data guard, right? Yes. So, so all the mission critical customers should have, you know, uh, uh, a data guard, right? Then you can do, you can patch the standby first and then patch, patch production system. But we understand that not all customers do that. So 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 we will address that issue and uh, 
again, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure uh, we can have an answer for, for you guys uh, as soon as possible on this rolling upgrades. Perfect. Um, any additional questions? Lori is asking, I have a customer looking at moving the databases off of Spark onto Oracle Database Appliance. What are the performance considerations for that? All right. Yeah, so, 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 yeah, performance is always a tricky question, right? Because uh, your mileage may vary, right? Depends on, you know, how many cores are they coming off Spark? You know, uh, what's their bandwidth? <laughs> Uh, is it an IOP and, you know, what other applications? So, so there are a lot of dependencies, right? So it's really hard to just say, oh, if you move from Spark to ODA, you know, you know, if you have the same number of cores, it's going to give you better performance, right? So, so it really, you know, the, the answer really depends, but, uh, but, but Lori, I can, you know, work offline for you in terms of sizing, you know, because we do have a pretty good characteristics of, uh, uh, what the maximum IOPS we can, you know, so over 2 million IOPS, right, on the HA system and some 26 gigabytes per second throughput that we can, you know, on the HA system, we can sustain. So, so it just depends on kind of what kind of work performance they need for the, for the Spark system. And then, you know, what's their budget and uh, what, are, you know, there are a lot of different trade-offs, right? So we could yeah. definitely discuss this off. We do have the performance white paper the customers can look at, the XA performance white paper uh, talks about, you know, the, you know, like if you have this many, you know, SSD performance, you have this like one shelf, you get this much, two shelf storage, you get that much. Um, so they can get an idea, but but again, it's a very, uh, there's a lot of dependencies. So, so but we could discuss that, Lori. And, and we have some, we have some customers who already moved from uh, Spark platform to the Oracle Database Appliance. We could also uh, reach out to them to get some more details on real life uh, experience. Right. But but yeah, so Larry, uh, yeah, go ahead and schedule uh, a chat with uh, Paul and to to get more details. Um, okay, any any more questions, team? Or if you have some customers, feel free to ask questions as well. All right. Well. Um, you know your our contact information. Uh, if some customers are here, you feel free, right? Is go to the Oda blogs and just add a comment as well for any questions that you may have. And and uh, uh, yeah, reach out. Let us know. We're here to help you with any information you may need. So, Paul, any final words or? Uh, I don't think that's good. You know, you know, this is our you know last. Um, webcast for the year and uh, we will come back um, you know probably late in January and um, so so that's all I have to say yeah all right thank you very much everyone